Good morning. Welcome to our Sunday morning virtual service. My name is Reverend James Parker. It's a pleasure to be here with you today and a wonderful time for us to come together in a moment of oneness. Well, let's get started with our daily word. And our daily word today is free. And it says, living from my divine nature frees me. Sometimes I feel limited when I don't think I have enough time, money, space, education, or experience. These thoughts can occupy so much space in my mind that I begin to think limitation is the truth of life. The greater truth is that I am free and unlimited in spirit. Alive in God, I am free to express all the love, wisdom, and strength of a divine as only I can. What joy and liberation it is to know that nothing can separate me from my true spiritual nature. If I believe any circumstance in my life or any of my past actions obstruct or delay my spiritual progress, I now release that belief. Embracing and living from the divine presence, the Christ within me, I claim freedom from all limitation. And the scripture comes from the book of Acts chapter 17, verse 28. In him we live and move and have our being. Let us take a moment and go into the silence and allow the Spirit of God to now work in and through us. And so it is. Good morning. Welcome to our virtual service. My name is James Parker. Let's get started. My lesson title today is The Mystical Experience. Mirabai Star said, A mystic is a person who has a direct experience of the sacred, unmediated by conventional religious rituals or intermediaries. Friends, to qualify as a mystic, as one who has had a sacred mystical experience or a series of mystical experiences, it really means allowing yourself to let go of your identity or ego and just being. In mystic states, we both become one with the absolute and we become aware of our oneness. The term mystical experience has become synonymous with the terms religious experience, spiritual experience, and sacred experience. Webster's Dictionary describes this transformative power as the belief in or direct experience of God, especially by means of contemplation instead of rational thought. It's an individual's transformation into oneness with all things. It's the belief in the existence of realities beyond the intellect that are directly accessible by prayer, meditation, writing poetry, and other things. 
It's not based on criticism. It's a system of contemplative prayer and spirituality aimed at achieving a direct inner experience of the divine. Ask someone without a theology degree to picture a mystic, and they might imagine a yogi meditating on a mountaintop, the whirling dervishes of Turkey, or a nun living a monastic life of fervent prayer. People slightly more familiar with the word may even be able to name a couple of the best-known mystics. Rumi, for instance, the 13th century poet and Sufi mystic, or St. Teresa of Avila, the Spanish nun known for writing about her mystical experiences, including levitation. These examples have one thing in common. They live or lived in a place and or time far removed from anything we can relate to today. Nobody envisions a mystic as a normal or traditional type person, but on the contrary, there are evidently plenty of self-identified mystics among us today. Why? Because simply put, being a mystic only requires truth-seeking and a dedication to making a first-hand connection with a higher power. It's a kind of turning inward and allowing yourself to just abide in a space that makes a welcoming place for the sacred. A mystic can be a bartender or a bus driver or a school teacher or a journalist. It's got nothing to do with your external life and everything to do with internal experience. Just an ordinary person who does ordinary things can experience these moments of profound union with the source. Starr continues to say, a mystic is someone who has an experience of union with the one, a interconnectedness with all that is. Friends, the mystical experience applies knowledge of a transcendental reality, cosmic unity, or ultimate truths. It's a religious experience in which a person is transformed and reports the necessary loss of individuality. It's about fully embodying our relationship with God, turning away from our separated ego and self-dissolving into the one. George Eliot, from his book Middlemarch, said, If we had keen vision and a feeling of all ordinary human life, it would be like hearing the grass grow and the squirrel's heartbeat, and we should die of the roar which lies on the other side of silence. It describes the dull state in which most of us live and the yearning to peel back this dullness in order to experience the powerful presence of life and spirit itself. Like countless others, we have all heard this roar, have seen the place on the other side of silence, and have felt the kind of eternal peace. These encounters show us that there is a purposeful presence that underlies all creation and that there is a oneness to everything. And it's this experience of this presence that is called mysticism. Frankly, all mystics share a similar understanding that there is a presence which goes by many names and that I prefer to call God that creates and animates everything from the squirrel's heartbeat to the spinning of galaxies and that we can, through our own consciousness, connect to this presence, which is a deeper and truer reality than the one that most of us experience in our everyday lives. And through this encounter, we are totally transformed. Emily Dickinson was a prolific American poet. She wrote nearly 1,800 poems. Many of her poems deal with themes of immortality and gives her readers a glance into the soul of a mystic. She wrote this concerning her mystical experience. The soul superior instance occurred to her alone when friend and earth's occasion have infinite withdrawn or she herself ascended to too remote a height for lower recognition than her omnipotent. This mortal abolition is seldom but as fair as apparition subject to autocratic air, eternity's disclosure to favorites a few of the colossal substance of immortality. Let me interpret it for you. The soul superior instance occur when we are alone in the silence, where we are ascended into an, uh, an omnipotent connection with God. It's the abolition of the mortal consciousness and becoming subject to what she called an autocratic heir, better known as a ruling inner power. 
It's eternity's disclosure of the colossal substance of immortality, oneness with God. That's beautiful, don't you think? Friends, the mystical experience, like the visual response to a painting or, or, ple or the pleasure of being loved by another, transcends and resists words. Why should one care about accessing this deeper reality? Well, let me give you an example. 2,300 years ago in his famous Allegory of the Cave, Plato wrote about a mystical experience. Loosely paraphrasing, he said, Suppose that you've been kept chained in a cave all your life. Behind you blazes a fire, and next to you sit a row of other prisoners. All that you and the prisoners know of life is the experience of watching the shadows dancing on the opposite wall to you, and the shared interpretations of what you see. However, by chance, one day your chains break and you escape into the outside world. At first, you are confused, overwhelmed, scared, but you also feel an immense sense of expansion, awe, and bliss. You become aware that you are experiencing a larger, more complete and absorbing reality than, than would than what you could see within the cave. You discover the sun and its beauty and warmth. You find a new and deeper reality apart from shadows and darkness. Plato went on to say, for the first time in this person's life, they experienced freedom and then recognized that they had been living in a cold, dark cave, separated from their fellow prisoners and ignorant of their true nature and reality. And that's what it's like. Friends, to some degree, we are all prisoners in the cave of our past experiences. We live in a reality that is formed based on past circumstances, feelings, judgments, and biases, our very own darkness and shadows. However, a mystical experience, uh, experience challenges our worldview and facilitates the transformation into a new reality. This is an experience of God's presence in which the sense of separation and the desire of the ego are clearly seen as foolish and dangerous illusions that keep us bound and ignorant. The impulse to seek and experience oneness with God is a greater reality where we live at the highest level. Hmm. Rumi, a Persian poet, jurist, theologian, and Sufi mystic, who was described as the most popular poet in America through, through his poem, Unity of Spirit, wrote, In things spiritual, there is no partition, no number, no individuals. How sweet is the oneness of God with his creation. Catch the spirit and clasp it to your bosom. Mortify rebellious individuality till it wastes away. Unearth the treasure of unity. Friends, there's truly no separation from God. No individuality in the universe. There's only oneness with our source and with all things. The mystical experience is the joyous disappearance, disappearance of self along with everything else and considered by those who have had it to be the most beautiful, blissful, positive, profound, and significant experience of their lives. The experience is described as both a human and cultural phenomenon. It often, it's often portrayed as the holy moment or ecstatic experience that your connection to life and, and spirit expands significantly. In this profound state of being, you feel that life is full of beauty and sacredness. Yet this feeling is not subjective, but is instead an objective phenomenon that is outside of your personal ego self. Rabbi Lawrence Kushner said, a mystic is anyone who has the gnawing suspicion that apparent discord, brokenness, and contradictions that assault us every day might conceal a hidden unity. Begin today. Make prayer, meditation, or writing down your most beautiful thoughts a habit. For behind this great force of transformation and beauty is the existence of a deeper, more conscious and intelligent source where we experience glimpses into our most sacred and ancient home of consciousness. By simply learning to let go and then integrate the profound realizations and great powers we have within us and that we each have access to, we can experience true, long-lasting transformation. And then slowly and steadily, we begin to taste the essence and beauty of eternity, a newer and deeper reality and experience joy and love and oneness with God in all life. Get, to, get, get it together today. 
allow yourself to come into a moment where you experience your mystical moment. And I promise you, you'll have a great experience and you'll thank me for it. Are you willing to do this with me today? Well, thank you all and God bless you. Well, we've come to our time in the service where we open our hearts to give. And this is an opportunity for you to share your gifts, to share your bounty. Now, there are three ways that you can give. You can go to our website at unichicago.org and hit the contribute button. Or you can text us at 773-492-8772. Or always mail us a check to 2650 West Montrose, Suite 110, Chicago, Illinois, 60618. And now I ask that you take your offering, take that gift and send energy from your heart into that gift and let us say our offertory blessing together. Divine love, richly flowing through me, blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. I am grateful for the blessings of this day. I am grateful for the blessings on the way. And so it is. Friends, if you prayed that prayer with us, you are moving energy, you are moving substance. Now, take the opportunity, open your mind, open your heart, get ready, claim your gift, it's on its way. And now let us take a moment and pray it into existence. Heavenly Mother, Father, everything God, thank you for these gifts that we received today. We know they come from those who love you and who are open and receptive to doing your will. God, take these gifts now and use them in the world to make the world a better place and then return them to the giver. 100-fold, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Fill their bank accounts, fill their wallets. Remove any tragedy, any debt, any, any burdens from their life. Lift them up and bring happiness into their homes and families. More of you, God, less of me. More of you, God, less of me. More of you, God, less of me. And we see it all working now in the name and very nature of Jesus the Christ. And so it is. Amen. Well, friends, thank you for being here with us today. If you're new to our service, welcome to our home. Welcome to our family. We love you. We bless you. We appreciate you. Please come again. And if you're going through something, if you're having a struggle in your life, go to our website at unitychicago.org. Check out one of our services, one of our meditations. Find something there to inspire and uplift you. And if you like what you see, hit the like button, ring the bell, hit the subscribe button. That way our message gets out into the world. And I ask you to stick around and check out some of our announcements. We always, always have something great going on at our church. And now I ask that you become still. And let us say our prayer for protection together. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. Well, friends, thank you for being here with us today. Thank you for coming into our home. We look to see you next week. See you then.